Welcome to a vintage model traction engine restoration. This is part 10. Replacing the displacement lubricator, repacking the regulator gland and making some new studs. The fixings that hold the regulator block in place are really nasty. They're actually a mishmash of different fixings. The holes in the block itself have been drilled out. So I think it's time to put this right. There's been a past repair in this area. I noticed this when I first looked at the traction engine. I'll find out what it is in due course. First thing to do is to release the union on the steam pipe. I'm going to have to make a decision about how to repair this. Currently it looks like the studs are a mixture of 4BA and M4. Originally I thought they were M5, but I'm not very good at estimating metric stuff. Most miniature steam engines use imperial measurements, or at least the old ones do. When I remove the regulator housing, you can see this strange slide valve with its two small springs. This means there is always positive pressure on the port face. In most traction engines, the regulator does not receive any oil lubrication, and often regulator slide valves in the port faces are badly scored, but this one, as you can see, is perfectly fine. I have to admit that I don't know what the two holes are for at each side of the central part that allows the steam to go to the steam chest after the regulator has allowed it to do so. Here's the regulator block on its side on the bench, complete with the displacement lubricator. The displacement lubricator has a long piece of pipe crudely soldered to a drain cock which promptly fell off. More about that later. In a previous episode I showed how I straightened the regulator rod. I took this opportunity to straighten it some more and now it's quite straight. This regulator valve rod is far too thin and weedy and it's almost identical to the one fitted to my Bassett Loke Tangy steam engine. There's too much packing in the stuffing gland and the thread on the gland nut is not everything it should be. So here, using my scriber, I'm poking out the old gland packing material. I don't even know what this is. It looks like black PTFE. I'm also taking this opportunity to remove some of the old sealant from around the base of the unit. I think it's time to look in my box of silicone steam grade O-rings. I'm going to use one of these. It's a very small O-ring, but it will fit around the valve spindle and also into the gland. This clip really shows how straight the valve rod is. It was actually bent in five places along its length. I'm poking the o-ring into the correct position using my screwdriver. When you're fitting o-rings into stuffing glands like this, be very careful you do not nick the o-ring. I cleaned up the gland nut a little bit in the lathe, and here it is, ready to go back into service without leaking. This is the displacement lubricator, and it's really horrible. It's also soft-soldered. And also, not unsurprisingly, the drain tap leaks when I test it with compressed air. If I was rebuilding this traction engine just to be a static model, then I would probably leave it as it is. But this traction engine is not going to be a static model, it needs to run and run successfully. The one I've temporarily fitted is a type that I used to sell, made by Don English. A fully automatic displacement lubricator. Now I need to remove the last two studs. One of them is very loose and the other one is very tight. And the last one took some removing, and then there were none. I've removed the metal plate that's sandwiched between the regulator housing and the main cylinder block. And I still don't know what the purpose is of the holes either side of the central port, even though the holes are open on the plate, underneath the blocked up anyway. I think this was a mistake in the early part of the machining of the cylinder block. They're not causing any problems, so I'll leave them as they are. It's time now to re-thread the holes in the top of the block. I'm using an M4 tap. I'm very carefully cutting a nice clean thread down into the block in the original holes. And now these holes will take some of these. Stainless steel Allen Caphead M4 bolts. Experts and conservationists, please relax. I'm not going to use Allen Caphead bolts to hold the thing in place. I'm going to cut six of these bolts to length, basically chop the heads off them. I'm just measuring how long they need to be. I will hold them firmly in my back or wrench and chop the heads off on the bandsaw. The first one I cut was too short and don't worry, I'm going to clean the tops of them up. For a few moments I thought, shall I use some stainless steel bolts? Then I gave myself a good slap and put the box away. Once I cut six studs to the correct length, ground off the ends and polished them, I used the traditional lock nut method to fit the studs into the block. And here's the finished job. I think they look okay. The amount of thread sticking out of the nuts 
is about what it needs to be to make it match the fixings that hold the cylinder to the boiler. After refitting the steam pipe, it's time for a test. Things are starting to bed in now. I have been running this traction engine without videoing it. The length of time I've worked on this engine in the videos bears no relation to reality. I thought it was a good idea to change the automatic lubricator that I fitted and instead fit this one, which has a control valve. The displacement lubricator is of course doing nothing because it doesn't work with compressed air. A displacement lubricator will only work when it's running on steam. The automatic one doesn't have a valve on it, so when the engine was in steam it wouldn't be possible to refill it. Because don't forget it's fitted to the regulator chest, not to the valve chest. And inside the cavity of the regulator chest is full boiler pressure. But by using one with a valve, I close the valve, unscrew and remove the bottom valve, then slightly open the main steam valve at the top, just enough to allow the boiler pressure to blow out the water followed by replacing the drain valve and removing the top cap to refill it with oil. Obviously, as you can see, this is in slow motion and when I put my hand on the flywheel to put a load on it, it sounds quite like my big traction engine when it's in steam. It's still a bit clunky, but that should improve once I tighten the big end bearing. As you can see, the regulator also works very well. Time for me to go now, so I'd just like to say stay safe and well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave this shot running to the end of the video. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.